Hey everyone, this is Anna here and in this video I want to talk to you about the recipe that I use for cuerda seca which is the technique, the painting technique that I am going to explain in this video and the recipe is very simple, not an exact science and I'll show you my recipe right here and how I mix them. So here is the recipe that I use right here. These are my notes and you can take a snapshot of this so you have it. The recipe that I use is this first one right here which is 25% oil, 60% oxide, 15% frit. So I use, the frit I use is 3124 which is what I had here at home. As you can see, it's a very small amount. 60% oxide, I used uh, red iron oxide. I also just made this test over here that using uh, black iron oxide, but I haven't tested this one yet. And I use linseed oil, but some people use baby oil or olive oil. And I believe those will work just as well. I haven't tested those yet. Um, the most common uh, resist used is uh, wax resist for the cuerda seca. Uh, and I wrote down the name here, it's called Aftosa, is one of them that I googled and it came up and it's sold by the ceramic shop. It's called black wax resist. Another one called artistic line resist. I have not tested those but I believe that's very uh, common, commonly used. The other recipes for the cuerda seca is this one here is three parts oil, three parts oxide, and somebody used the manganese dioxide as the oxide, and one part flux. Have not tested that one yet. This one is in grams, so liquid wax, 50 grams, frit, 3124, which is what I used, 3 grams, red iron oxide, 5 grams, black iron oxide, 5 grams. So I'll show you how I mixed uh, mine on this one. And these little containers are great. I got these at the dollar store and it's like a little Tupperware with the lid, comes like that. So I love those for this purpose to store my oils. Um, so I use this old palette knife and I grab my dry ingredients first. So for the oxide, I use about maybe a half inch or so. Uh, so it would be equivalent to maybe a teaspoon of oxide. And then for the frit, just the very tip of, the, of this palette knife, I just grab, you know, a very, very small amount. So mix that in. Then I use the linseed oil. I start adding little by little. So when I first add maybe another teaspoon of the linseed oil, I make like a paste. And then I like to smooth that paste into like a piece of tile or a glass tile just to make sure that it's all dissolved. You, you wanna smear that really well and mix that in because it's kind of hard to mix it in, inside this container. And then once you feel that the, the paste is very smooth, you put it back in here and you add more oil until you get this drippy consistency. I hope you can tell, you can see it. It's very smooth. And it works really well for painting with my liner brush. And right before I use it, I, I stir that really well. So you grab all the, all the powder that is, you know, settles on the bottom. I do that, I, I stir that very well. And then I use my lid. I put a little bit on the lid and that's what I use to just grab it from the lid because you use so little, you know, of it, so. But the test tiles, been a few years back, I made these two. Uh, this one here was using uh, wax resist, and I added some pigment to it, but it wasn't enough. As you can see, it was a very light gray color. Um, 
and it works, but I didn't like how, how it felt when I used my liner brush. So, but it does work and a lot of people use this, you know, wax resist. So this one I liked much better using the red iron oxide. And I also like to test my uh, glazes in here because you fire vertically. That's how I will use all my pieces would be vertically. Um, this technique is mostly used for tiles you know, which will fire horizontally like that. So less chances of your glazes running to your lines. Uh, but that's why you want to test it first, test the colors that you're going to use and see if that works out. Uh, the stroke and coat glazes are really good for this purpose because they're very stable. And by that, I mean, they don't move that much. Although some colors do tend to move a little bit more than others so they're still stable but if they start moving on your glaze firing then start covering your lines and that won't be desirable for this purpose so you can also use any other glazes that are stable i know laguna makes uh, a series that is also very stable i'm pretty sure amico has them too uh, and you you might find several other glazes not just these I like this stroke and coat because they come on a small bottle and there are so many different colors and you can mix them together uh, to create new colors and they are stable. But like I said, test them first to make sure that it will work for the purpose that you want to do. If you're making like trays or plates also that would be easier because chances are they will not move at all. So. Make sure you test and don't be afraid to to mix, you know, or even try the the black wax resist that's readily available. 